distinctive Italian design makes Alfa Romeo's Giulia stand out in the compact executive saloon segment, but this Latin contender has far more up its tailored sleeve than just good looks. Innovative engines, perfect weight distribution, unique technology and a best-in-class power-to-weight ratio deliver a car worthy of its famous maker. At last. If the look of this Alfa didn't make you want to buy it, the driving experience it offers might well do. Of course, the Giulia is saddled with quite a weight of expectation here. Tasked with embodying all of this famous Italian brand's heritage and sporting prowess. That it can deliver on this is evident in the first few miles that you spend at the wheel. The steering's quick and very responsive, and the brakes are brilliant. Plus, the stiff, sophisticated rear-driven chassis delivers a low centre of gravity, a perfect 50-50 front-to-rear weight balance, a class-leading power-to-weight ratio, and structural rigidity that keeps body roll well in check. Active suspension is optional, as is a limited slip differential to help get the power down through the bends. All Julias, though, get Alpha's DNA drive mode system so that you can tweak the throttle, the steering and the gear change timings to suit the mood you're in. All the engines on offer have been freshly developed for this car and almost all Julia buyers will choose between two very different units. The 2-litre petrol turbo power plant I'm trying here is one way you could go, offered with either 200 or 280 horsepower, but the vast majority of customers will prefer the 2.2-litre diesel, available in either 150 or 180 horsepower states of tune. In both cases, you can expect competitive efficiency figures. Uh, for the diesel, 67.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 109 grams per kilometre of CO2. For our market, all the engines must be mated to an 8-speed auto gearbox that you can activate with these deliciously emotive Ferrari-style paddle shifters. And talking of Ferrari influence, we should also mention the Maranello-engineered flagship variant, the storming 2.9-litre V6 biturbo 510 horsepower Quadrifoglio Super Saloon, the fastest Alfa ever made. You might quite justifiably feel pretty pleased with yourself when parking one of these amongst the Mercs, BMWs and Audis of your middle management colleagues. Even before you notice the evocative badge on the classic triangular trefoil nose, it's clear that this is a car with a uniquely Italian sense of flair, something further emphasised by the long bonnet, the short overhangs and the muscular haunches. There really is nothing quite like the Julia in this segment. Right, let's take a seat at the wheel. You'd hope for old-fashioned Alpha Charisma with modern functionality and Teutonic quality, and this Julia makes a good stab at achieving exactly that. True, there are a few issues with fit and finish, especially with some elements of the switchgear, and the Julia can't match its German rivals in terms of media connectivity, though the 8.8-inch center dash infotainment screen works effectively. There's so much else that's seductive about this cabin, though. The deeply cowled dials, a grippy little three-spoke wheel, splashes of aluminium, and huge evocative gear change paddles behind the steering wheel that look as if they were originally designed for a Ferrari, and probably were. Add a bit of embellishment, here courtesy of the luxury Lusso pack, with stitched Piano Fiore leather and sumptuous silverwood trim, and the interior can look absolutely gorgeous. When it's time to take a seat in the rear, taller folk might find access hindered a little by this swept back roof line. Still, the rear door opens decently wide. Once inside, you'll find that there's a decent amount of backseat space by class standards, with plenty of room to push forward your feet beneath the front seats. Finally, let's take a look in the boot, which opens to reveal a 480 litre capacity that surely, not coincidentally, is the exact equal of a BMW 3 Series or a Mercedes C-Class. 
The Julia can't cure all of Alpha's problems, but it can set the brand back on the road to a more profitable future. It won't be available in numbers large enough to really bother the volume players in the sector, but then that relative rarity is just another part of its appeal. It's not only an Alpha you could love, it's also one you could justify, which is about as much as anyone could ask for.